Hello everyone and welcome back to this nanophotonics and plasmonics course. This video we go through the derivation of the Elmhorst most equations starting from Maxwell's curl equation. So more specifically we're going to start from the frequency dependent uh, Maxwell's equations. Uh, we're going to use the curl of the magnetic field H which is equal to negative I omega times the electric displacement D plus the current density J. Uh, we can answer from this equation and we're also going to use two equations that have been introduced in part three of chapter two uh, which uh, express the electric and magnetic field as a function of the potentials uh, both the vector potential A and the scalar potential Thi. So the electric field is uh, I omega A minus the gradient of the scalar potential and the magnetic field is 1 over mu node mu times the curl of the scalar pot uh, vector potential. Uh, we're also going to need the uh, constitutive relations. Uh, in particular, we're going to need the consideration that relates the electric displacement D with the electric field. So the first thing we need to do is uh, inject the magnetic field, the expression for the magnetic fields into equation one on the left hand side. So we can rewrite uh, this left hand side as one over mu node mu times the curl of the curl of the vector potential. And then we're gonna use the expression of the electric field together with the constitutive relation and inject that also on the on the in equation one on the right hand side so we're going to be uh, writing negative i omega epsilon naught epsilon times i omega vector potential a minus gradient of scalar potential and then we're left with the current density. So that's gonna be equation three. Uh, and we can just rewrite this a little bit, uh, a little bit better. We're gonna move uh, the coefficient one over mu node mu to the right hand side of the equation. So that's just rewriting some of the terms. So we're gonna have negative one, uh, negative i omega times mu naught mu epsilon naught epsilon on the right hand side times i omega a negative gradient of the scalar potential plus mu naught mu times the current density. So here we can further modify uh, the right hand side of the equation. We're going to be using the Lorentz, the Lorentz gauge. So this is a traditional gauge, uh, t um, which is different from the, co the Coulomb gauge that leads to the Poisson's equation. So the Lorentz gauge, which also can be found, can be found in um, electromagnetic textbooks, uh, is well known. Uh, its uh, frequency domain form uh, reads as the divergence of the vector potential, which is equal to i omega mu node mu epsilon node epsilon times the scalar potential. So with this, uh, with those gauge, we can inject this into the right hand side of the equation four to uh, substitute the gradient of the scalar potential. So we can just rewrite the left hand side as is, so the curl of the curl of the vector potential negative I omega mu node mu epsilon node epsilon times I omega A on the right hand side. And here we're gonna be modifying this, uh, this second term, substituting this, and we're gonna be left with the gradient of the divergence of the vector potential. And then we finally, we have the last part which is mu naught mu times the current density. 
So we can uh, also use uh, some well-known expressions that actually relate the different operators, NABLA operators, uh, to rewrite the, this equation and simplify it further. Uh, so we can find this expression in any mat uh, mathematical physics textbook. Uh, so the curl of the curl is actually equal to negative uh, NABLA square, which is the Laplacian, plus the gradient of the divergence. So that's something which is well known that you can uh, actually uh, derive yourself. You can show this, this relationship yourself. And this allows actually to rewrite uh, equation five in a different way. Uh, so we just basically substitute the curl of the curl on the left-hand side of the equation and we're left with uh, negative Nabla squared plus the gradient of the divergence that applies to A. Uh, we're also going to move uh, uh, some of the, the terms uh, later, uh, so that's applied to A. Uh, we have on the right hand side negative i omega times i omega, so we are left with omega square. Uh, we left on omega square on this, he on this end here, mu node mu epsilon node epsilon times A. Then we have the gradient of the divergence of the um, vector potential plus mu naught mu times the current density. So now you should see that uh, this term actually cancels out on both sides. We are left with something which is going to be a little bit simpler. Uh, so we're going to do multiple things at the same time here. So we're going to actually move uh, some of the terms from the right hand side. So the omega square mu naught mu epsilon naught epsilon times a uh, is moved to the left hand side of the equation. So we are left with omega square mu naught mu epsilon naught epsilon. And this is all applied to the vector potential a. And on the right hand side, we just left with mu node mu times j. And we can actually rewrite this uh, much more much more elegantly. Uh, if, you re if you just uh, change the sign of the equation, uh, we're going to be left with the Laplacian plus omega square. Uh, then you need to, uh, to recognize that mu naught mu epsilon naught epsilon is actually c squared, the speed of light squared applied on the vector potential and because we change the sign we have negative mu naught mu on this this side of the equation so this leads to this final equation which is the uh, one of the uh, almost equation uh, the second equation uh, can actually uh, be derived using the other curl equation uh, we also uh, need to, to recognize that uh, this term omega square uh, c square is actually connected to the wave vector, it gives you the wave vector uh, because this almost equation is actually the equivalent of the wave equation uh, in the frequency domain applied to the, to the to, in this case, to the uh, vector potential. 